Okay, so we're still in section 4.2a. We just got done doing questions like this, where this was the form of it. This time, you get this form. And in this form, to find the vertex, you got a negative b over 2a. And there's other ways you can do it. This, I think, is the fastest. The number up here is a, this is b, this is c. So, negative 8, 2 times 1. 1 would be your a value. So, negative 4 is the x value of the vertex. So to find out what the other value is, you plug it back in to figure out what that would be. So you plug it back in. Sixteen minus thirty-two plus fifteen would give you negative one. Yeah, negative one. I'm thinking that would be negative four, negative one, just off the top of my head. So let me make sure that would be 31. Yeah, 31. So now if I graph it, back 4, down 1. And since this is a positive value on x squared, it opens up. So you're going to wind up with two intercepts. So with two intercepts, we take this and set it equal to 0. So we take this, set it equal to 0. Now you have some options. You can either complete the square. You can factor this, or you can use a quadratic formula. So I would suggest you try factoring it first. Uh, factoring is where you do this guy right here. And multiples, uh, factors of 15, that would get you 8. So let's see if it's add or subtract. See, x times x is x squared. Now this has to be a positive. That's a positive. So these are both positives. And I think if I use 5 and 3, 5 times 3 is 15. And 3x and 5x would give you 8x. So if you multiply this back out, you get what you started with. The zero product property says that anything times zero is zero. So if I put in, if, if I figure out what x would be here to give me zero, like say negative 5, negative 5 would give me zero right here. And negative 5 times anything is zero. I'm sorry, zero times anything is zero. Because if I put a negative 5 in here, I don't get 0. It doesn't matter because I'm already multiplying by 0. Basically, you take both of those factors and set them equal to 0. That's the idea behind it. So, x equals negative 5. x equals negative 3. So, my x-intercepts are negative 5, 0, negative 3, 0. If this didn't factor out, you'd have to use a quadratic formula. That's what I would suggest you do. Okay, same way here. I'm going to skip, well, I'll skip the vertex thing. Now nah, I was going to do it. Negative b over 2a. So b is 6 and a is negative 1. So negative 6 over 2 times negative 1 is a negative 6 over negative 2, which is 3. Take your 3 and plug it back in. Now notice how I've got the negative on the outside here. When I plug it back in, it's on the outside. Plug it back in, that's negative 9 plus 18 minus 5. So that should be what? Uh, 4? So my 3, 4 is my vertex. So when I graph it, over 3, I have 4. See that negative, see that negative there on the x? That makes it a friendly face. Oh, friendly face. So, uh, Two intercepts. Two intercepts I'm looking for. So I set this equal to zero. That's how I find that x intercepts. I haven't wrote it down a little while ago. That's how important it was. Now, I don't like factoring this with a negative in front, so I can just change all the signs. Since this is set equal to zero, I can multiply everything by one, negative one. Essentially, you can change all the signs if you want to. You couldn't do that if this was like a one or a five, you couldn't do that. But it's a zero, and anything times zero is still zero. So that's, that's legal. Then, I can factor this. This is positive, which means both signs are the same. This is negative, which means they're both negatives. So factors of five, that would give me six. That's five and one. Factors of five, that would add to give me six. Five plus one is six. So, 
you set these guys equal to zero individually. Zero product property. So x equals five, x equals one. So your your intercepts are at five one, five zero, and one zero. That's pretty close to what I kind of graphed it as. B over 2a, so negative b, the negative 8 over 2 times 1, is the 4. Plug your 4 back in. So it's 16 plus 32 plus 12. My gosh, it's negative 4. Negative 32. Okay. So that would be 28 minus 32, so it's 4, negative 4. So negative 4, negative 4. I graphed it real quick. It's dim. But there would be the vertex. And it's going to open upwards. That's a horrible parabola. Anyways, two x-intercepts. So we set this bad boy equal to 0. Hopefully it will factor. If not, we're going to use a quadratic formula. So put your x's in. Plus here means same sign. That means they're both positives. Factors of 12 that give you 8. Well, you got 1 and 12. No. 2 and 6. Hey, there's my huckleberry. We set those equal to 0 individually. Most of the time you can just look and say it's negative 2 and negative 6, but here's your work. Negative 2 comma 0, negative 6 comma 0. That's your two x-intercepts. I'm going fast because you can always rewind this, pause it, and so on and so forth. Vertex here is real quick, is real easy. So it would be a 5, negative 9. That's the vertex. I just pull it off of there. And let's see, we go over 5, down 9. It opens up. Because there's a positive, there's no negatives there, so it's a, a smiley face. See, smiley face. <sighs> anyway, uh, set this thing equal to zero. Okay, you gotta take the square root. This one actually wants it being a number, plus or minus three. So when you wind up with plus minus three. Uh, Two, two problems in one. So, so now it's x plus 5 equals 3, x plus 5 equals negative 3. You subtract 5 from both of them. x equals negative 2, x equals negative 8. So my x intercepts are at Negative 2, 0, negative 8, 0. It doesn't, it doesn't. Uh, hmm. Oh, okay. I screwed up here. I was going to say, because this, this doesn't work with my graph. Negative two zeros over here, and eight zeros over here. So I know I messed up, and I messed up because it was minus five here. It should have been plus fives here, or minus fives here. Shoot. So let me start over. My bad. At least you can know how to not do one. So I gotta split this up twice. That's what I did. I had a negative there and I scratched it out and made a plus. Add five each time. So you wind up with eight and a positive two. That that's more kosher. That that actually goes with what I have graphed up here at two and eight. So these are not right. 
because I've messed up and can't write a plus and a minus. Okay, one last question. This is a, kind of a combination of everything. When it looks like this, it's a lot easier if you just multiply this out and get what it should be. So it would be x squared minus 1x plus 9x minus 9 plus 25. So I just distributed the x and distributed the negative 1. Well, I kind of did it backwards. But anyway, it's got the same thing. So x squared plus 8x minus 9 plus 25. So I put those together. Now these go together. x squared plus 8x uh, plus 16. So negative 3 over 2a. Negative 8 over 2 times 1. Negative 4. Plug that back in and get 16 minus 32 plus 16. That's 0. So negative 4, 0 is your vertex. Oh shoot. Look at here. You got one x intercept and it's the vertex. <laughs> that's a that's a two for one on that one. So this is the vertex. And it's the x-intercept. So if you actually know what you're doing, you could stop there instead of trying to set that equal to equal to zero and solving it out. Because once I plug my four back negative four back in, I get the same thing. So here's how you find your x-intercepts and your vertex.